Right. Come on, Jigger, for another this afternoon. There'll not be much more than that because uh, the sun's dropped now. I'm up the plot, and it's uh, oh, temperatures plummeted. So I'm not going to be up here too long. But uh, one job most try and get out of the way. I'm in the rope on the uh, polytunnel, and it's it's absolutely honking. It's just like a brewery. It's lovely. Uh, we'll cover this bed, me and Roger. Um, you put the red duke yolks in on Saturday morning. It's three rows in. That's the early potatoes, and uh, what we did last week, we got a, we got a delivery from one of our friends of um, of 16 big bags of hops. Well, the hops are fantastic. Loads of um, loads of good feeds in them, uh, minerals, uh, which I posted on my Facebook. If um, in case any of you missed it, um, but uh, what I'm going to do this afternoon before I go back down home is because uh, it's starting to warm up in these tunnels, so I'm going to put a half a bag in my bottom tunnel. This is my nettle, my nettle barrel that I usually make the nettle juice up in. Uh, as I explained, I was poorly last year, so I never got home to making that. So I'm going to substitute it with uh, half a bag of hops and let it ferment over the next few weeks. And once some strawberries come into, uh, come into start cropping, that water will feed the strawberries. Just the same as what the nettle juice used to do. It's got a high night rate in, so it should be do all right for the strawberries. And then I've given a few feeds of that, and then I can change it to potash once the fruit sets. Yeah, uh, I'll go back on my comfrey on my horse manure juice or, you know, seaweed, whatever I've got. Um, but as I say, we like to try and be as organic as we can. So, this is one of the jobs I must try and get out the road this afternoon. I'm just going to take my time. Uh, there's just fresh water in this barrel. As I say, I, I normally like to have, uh, by the end of the year, I normally like to have a, uh, a good barrel load of uh, nettle juice ready for us. Ready for the, um, the early strawberries. The smell is absolutely unbelievable. It's a beautiful crumb. If you haven't used hops before, uh, and you can get a hold of it, by all means do it. It's an absolutely fantastic feed for the crops. Um, I'm just going to give that a good stir and up. Not as, uh, not as bad as what the nettle juice is. When you uh, when you make up a juice here, uh, bar of nettle juice, and yeah, it starts fermenting, you can half tell the difference because you can smell it a mile away. But this is uh, this is quite pleasant. Uh, no, I'm not going to make a secondary fermentation and start drinking it. This is definitely first strawberries. Well, that's great. Let's see the weather warming up the tunnel now. Just put a lid on that. wood and crap all the way. Put the lid on and that will that'll start fermenting great. Get a handful and just uh, give you an idea of what I like. It's uh, it's lovely and moist. Oh the smell of that. Now that's gonna do twofold. Um, it's gonna make us a nice juice for the strawberries. But what I'm gonna do tomorrow because I noticed on some of the cabbages in the tuck tunnel They've been getting a bit away by, um, excuse me, by slugs. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just dip a couple of small cups, some plastic cups, and it'll just be like a beer. I'll take a little drop out of the barrel, pour it in some plastic cups, and sink the plastic cups along the beds and between the cabbages, and that's going to hopefully entice the slugs into that. So we'll not have to use anything on there. What I will be doing is a rare, uh, is a garlic spray. But there. Uh, before I put the garlic spray on, I want to just sink a couple of pots with this uh, fermented dead juice on. And it'll act just like a beer. I'll sink a few pots around the cabbages and hopefully that'll like, taste the slugs into them. So uh, keep my cabbages nice and clean. There's not that much damage, I'm, I'm really pleased. Um, and of course, looking around here, uh, things are fantastic. The plants are just flipping, romping away. Uh, <laughs> there's a calendula. Oh, they're perfect. Now, Peter, They'll be just self sown them, they would have self sown themselves last year in the borders. Um, but I like to start them off fresh from seed. And uh, they're just all filled up pots. So they'll be going outside next month to harden off on the benches and they'll be perfect for planting out in March. And get a beautiful early flower from them, April and May. And of course, when being perennial, uh, they last forever. Great stuff, I'm really pleased with them. Uh, same as the poppies. 
poppies are doing really well, that's another good perennial. They'll just uh, they'll flower away really well. My pansies are just starting to catch up. They're still a little bit smaller, but come March, April, they'll be fine. They're lovely strong little plants, nice and dark. They haven't been forced up in any way, just growing on naturally in the cold. Well pleased with them, and of course wallflower as well. Absolutely beautiful. A lot of wallflowers are getting bare rooted plants, but uh, they're well out of the pot there now. But um, I'm happy with them. I'm, uh, I'm not bad because they're root bound. Uh, they'll just there, uh, as I say, fantastic. They'll go straight in the garden, then the next month, beginning of March. Just harden them off for a couple of weeks, and you get a fantastic flower from them come April. Well chuffed with the plants, well chuffed with them. You can see a whole baskets are hanging in here now, so chuffed with them, we're just being wrong with them. I just keep it checking them because uh, any little weeds that's grown up, they've been fed, and they still haven't been watered yet, so they've been hanging here a month now. Um, yep, since the solstice, which is uh, 20, 21st of December, and it's now the 25th, so it's just over a month, and they haven't been watered. All I've had is just weed it out. Um, they've had a little bit of sulfate of potash over them, and, uh, and of course this weekend I'm going to, once again, I'm going to give them a good spray of garlic, and just keep any emerging pests, any beasts that we've missed, that's on there, something for munching on the leaves. Well chuffed for that. So, that's me, uh, that's me beer. Well, me, me strawberry, me strawberry mix done, not me beer, sorry. Well, it is like beer, but it's, uh, it's going to be fantastic. But, uh, yep, there's the, uh, there's the beds. Absolutely chocker. A good covering of uh, of hops all the way over. And all that'll happen now is uh, once it, once them potatoes emerge from there, uh, we'll just uh, we'll just bank them up as normal, and you'll get a uh, get a first class crop of potatoes over there. Hopefully, I don't know it'll be uh, it'll be tasting like um, like fugal hops, but uh, I think uh. it'll be okay. So we're going to pop it in the greenhouse. Uh, I brought some of the gear down. And we can get there uh, stuck into some croissant cuttings. So I'll uh, I'll see you again soon. Okay. Right, afternoon everybody. Uh no doubt I don't have to tell you. By the sound of things. Um it's pouring down here in the northeast. Uh, I'm just gonna lift this try to pour up a tad to see if I'm uh, if I'm right on it. Well just don't Tied down and I'm that's fine. Yeah. Okay, yeah, well managed to get up the pot this afternoon. Uh, it's not the best of words, it's absolutely pouring down here in the northeast. Um which I, I suppose it's not bad because judging by the rest of the country, if you go a little bit south and uh down Durham Way, up into uh, the Northumbrian Hills and it's uh, it's white. It's pouring down. Snow, Scotland, Wales. So we're pretty lucky here, it's wet. Of course we're near the northeast coast. So we do get a lot of salt airs coming in, and uh, we're really fortunate that sometimes when uh, the country is basked in snow, we're uh, we're okay. It's uh, it can be it can be tough, beneficial to us at times, but um, when the wind switches around and comes back from the northeast and up the north sea, it's a, it's a bitterly cold winter. But uh, yeah, I'm well pleased with this. You see, it's it's rain today. It's not the white stuff. So I'm gonna I'm gonna crack on with a few little jobs. Um, I've got my trusty scissors ready. I think I've brought my tools I need. Uh, I did manage to bring up a couple of half paint pots from uh, from home, which I remembered on about. Uh, if you remember in the, early, in the beginning of the video, uh, what I did yesterday, I put a half a bag of hops into the barrel of water. And I got a good stirring around. Oh, it smells just like my home brew. Used to, used to years ago, but uh, there's no chance of me drinking that. This is a treat for a little slippery slimy fellows. Uh, I'm not a great fan of, um, of slug pellets. So wherever I can, I like to be as animal friendly. And this is not going to be animal friendly to the slugs, but what it will do, it'll, if we did get any um, roving animals around that want to the feast on the bits and pieces on the garden, I'm sure they're not going to be hurt by slug pellets, especially hedgehogs. You get sick of reading about them um, eating slug pellets. I know some, some of the slug pellets that you get on, on online now that are supposed to be creature friendly, but um, not for me I'm afraid. Um, if I can get round it, I will. So what I've done, on a half pint pot I've filled it half full 
of the magic juice. Uh, yeah, traps have been used for centuries and it's a sweet smell and that attracts the strokes to it. So all I'm going to do, and uh, it's a perfect example here, this is one of our, our own ball cabbages, spring cabbage, the um, spring hero, and it's probably been nibbled away, so that's a good start to, to where I'm going to put the first pot, and I'm just lying it on this top, pull the soil back around so it's nice and even, a little bit of soil so it's a little bit of a bank, and it's a perfect banquet. Now we'll have to warn Roger before he comes along weeding and I'll put a few traps in. And I'm going to slip one over on this side. <coughs> if you look along the bed, the rest are perfect. Uh, but where, where, where you do have um, wooden borders, you'll find that some things are sitting amongst the timbers. And they uh, hide away through the evening. Now that's fine, they can hide away, but... Uh, a little trap there because this plant here has been well eaten away and all. So I've got two traps in the same vicinity and I'm just going to pop another one in here just for security. Um, as I say it's, it's not a hard job. It's quite um, just pop the cell around there without getting any into the actual piece of cell. So that's three traps I've got. So all I've got here, um, in amongst the cabbages, as I say, once the cabbages start growing and the leaves start growing out, <coughs> these traps will just be hidden, but they'll still serve the same purpose. I can go around, lift the leaves up, and just keep topping, the, uh, topping them up and taking any slugs out. That's managed to climb their way in, into the juice, and, uh, and of course drown. Well, that's the idea then. It's, uh, it's a friendly way of killing them off. Um, if you think drowning in beers are uh, a good way to go, well, that's one for me. Uh, I certainly wouldn't mind it. Right, so that's that done. That's one of the jobs. Um, I wanted to get sorted. I haven't put any garlic spray on them yet. I want to make a big spray up this weekend. I tried to do it last weekend, but unfortunately, bits and pieces um, held us off. Uh, and this week, the start of the weather, it's, um, it looks like we're going to be put back for another week. There's a couple of jobs I wanted to do this week uh, and get them out of the way, but what I'll do is I'll wait now until... Um, until next week. Um, the sweet peas, I wanted to sow them, but I'm um, going to make a cold sown. I've had to change the greenhouses around a bit. Uh, put the heater in this one because there's a bit more room in here. Just a paraffin heater, just keeping the frost free, that's all. Where the croissant screws are, the daily tubers, and I have got some leeks and onions in there. So what I've done, I've put the little heater in there just to keep that frost free. There's a lot more room than what the melon house was there. The melon house was starting to run out of room drastically in there. So what I'm going to do, I'm turn, going to turn the melon house system into a cold sown greenhouse. Uh, and what I'll do, I'll bring the carpet up, get my trays all cleaned up, and uh, I'll start an early sow next week of um, sweet pea, a cabbage, sprout, kale, a few collies, and uh, some bits and pieces. Uh, one job I am going to do today is, uh, of course, as I say in my last video, uh, give them the chop. Now, to me, they're perfect. They come the end of January, I'm well pleased with them. And they're just at the right height where I want them to. Five, six inches tall, great. They're not over leggy, they're just a nice size. They're all standing up pretty well in the trees. So all I like to do now is take a nice sharp pair of scissors and just go to the first leaf. Off. 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 And off. And there we are. Chop the heads off. Now that will encourage the side shoots to come out and within a couple of weeks so that one will already start branching out that one there little finger but uh, that will strengthen them up if they need a little bit of feed on well we can, we can sort that out later on we can put a little bit of um, <coughs> we'll put a little bit of nitrogen in the water um, that will do exactly the same with beer because there's plenty of nitrate in that I can feed them on that um, a little bit of tomato feed a little bit of seaweed feed and that'll just keep them taken over. The roots have nicely filled up up in the pot, so I'm over the moon with that. I'll just still in the cold greenhouse here, no heat whatsoever. Well chuffed with them. So what I'll do, I'll crack on the day, I'll get the rest of them cut. As I say, there's some of them a little bit slow, and as I say this if you go around checking your pots, there's bits of weed, bits of grass grown. But as I say, my saying, 
Getting all your weeds from the seeds and you'll be fine. But once again just uh, first set of leaves there, chop, first set there, chop, is the first heads and they're going to branch away beautifully there. And by the end of March, beginning of March, you'll be first cuts for potting out into the air uh, in the back garden for the missus. Beautiful. I love the sweet peas, but um, yeah, I'm going to start early soon this year. Uh, get the end of January, begin of February, it'll be fine. We'll get the sweet peas out and we'll get cracking on with them next week. So I'm determined to get that whole tunnel sorted out in there, get the carpet down, get all my, my containers, all my property that's cleaned out, all the plastic lids, get them all nice and washed, and then we'll start a good early sewing of um, the Brasca family and sweet peas and a few bits and pieces. So I've started sewing geraniums and that, which I've seen in the first video. They're down home in a little bit of heat. Uh, as I say, the chilies, I've got them in the, in, the, uh, in the garage, they're in 60 degrees and I've, I've just noticed last night when I come to have a look that they're just starting to peek through. So they've only been in the fortnight and I'm well chuffed. Peppers are on the way up now. Uh, what I was, did mention in my video was um, I've managed to pick myself a couple of trees up from Law Shields, uh, pound stretchers, 4 99 Absolute bargain, and I love these trees. I've got two or three in the garden the plum tree, the pear tree, and the apple tree come from pound stretchers two or three years ago. So we've always had a good crop of them. Uh, that's a cherry tree that's I want to put in. That's a new cherry, and that's a beaut. But uh, I'll be starting. The only thing I will be planting in the garden is a cherry tree. Uh, I've got a space flat in the end of one of the fruit borders where I've got uh, a lot of soft fruits raspberries, red currants, black currants, and I've plant the cherry tree in amongst that. The apple trees, um, you know, they were exactly the same, there's lots of little side branches off. I've cut all them back, cleaned them all back, uh, with the seconders. But what I'm going to do with this fella, uh, I'm going to plant it out, and I'm going to chop the top of them. I'm going to cut them down to about a foot and a half to two foot on a nice outward facing bud. And the reason being, the way I'm going to grow this, is I'm going to grow it in a spalier. Now a spalier is easy to grow. It takes a bit longer, then just planting a bush out, a good bush with a good root on, M26, M27, you should get fruit within two years. This way it's going to be a little bit longer, but uh, it doesn't take up as much root. If you go back on some old videos, I would have liked to go outside today, but with the persistently raining, uh, that's not going to happen. So, on the raspberry beds that me and Roger dug up last year, um, or the year before, sorry, before I had my accident, we dug the, the raspberry beds up. I had been in, in that position for about 10, 15 years. So it was time to dig them out, take some nice new runners, and transplant the beds over to the far side of the garden. So we've got two sides of the beds, two ends of the trenches that are free. What I was going to do this year was plant beans and peas up on the supports. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start some apple trees, one on each one, but I'm going to, as I say, I'm going to grow it as an espalier. And all you need to do is put a few wires up and down, across a framework, Chop your main branch down to about 3 or 4 inches below your, your first wire and then we'll train 3 brand new shoots coming up. Two shoots will be for your, your first size, main shoot will be for your header. But I'll take you all through that. If you want to grow as bally as, if you've got a garden, uh, without much room, you don't want to put trees in, and I'll show you how to grow in a bally year. And uh, it's going to be 3 years before they come to fruitation, so, you know, patience, that's what it's all about in the garden. Any of you newcomers coming on site and thinking that you can do anything, everything in the year, well, <laughs> think again. But uh, this is a three year project. So I've got two trees now. I may pop down tomorrow because I've actually found another bed here that I have got free. So I've got them. Um, I've got a James Grieve. Um, I've got a James Grieve, which is a nice pink flush one. And I've got uh, the Bramley. And of course, what I will do is I'll put the Bramley up on the top where the biggest bed is because. Knowing a Bramley, that'll be the strongest grower. So what I will do, I'll plant the Bramley out next week. What we'll do when we start the video off, we'll get these three, two or three trees planted out in situ, get the wires and that put on, and I'll show you how to plant this spalier and get them started. As I say, it's going to be a two, three year project, but after a couple of years, your framework should be full of nice side branches, and you get plenty of fruit without taking up a lot of space in your garden. So that's the apples. That's my next job, sweet peas out the road, so, what I've got to do now, I've been sorting a few bits and pieces out. Uh, we're going to crack on up the top end and we're going to try and take some croissant cuttings. Okay?
Right, well, <coughs> hopefully I've got the camera ready uh, and in the right place where I need to be. Croissants. Absolutely beautiful flowers. I love them. Grown for years. Easy plant to grow. Easy plant to take cuttings off. And uh, once you've got them, you've got them for years. The outdoor varieties, you can plant, leave in the garden, dig up once they get two or three year old, divide the shoots. The big show varieties where you take in, as you've seen with mine, and overwinter stools in the greenhouse, and of course by early spring, a little bit of heat, they start to show up, throw up lo loads of lovely cuttings. Um, now what I'm going to do today, what I've done, I've taken some of the cuttings off. Uh, but what I'm not going to completely take it off, what, what some people like to do is just pull these away, the full cutting from the stem, and then just trim away and trim the actual uh, plant up until I get to the cutting that they like. I'm going to cut them from the bottom of the leaves, leave the, lo leave the lower base leaves on, and hopefully it will give us a second flush of cuttings around about March time. And that's when I'll take my cuttings for the garden. I'm not in any hurry this year, but what I want to do is I want to take some cuttings now, uh, because I want to do a multi sown and I want to do different varieties, uh, different ways of, of taking the cuttings. Now it's one of the cuttings I'm just taking off. It's quite an easy job. It's just there. Uh, just once you've taken the cuttings off, make sure that the bottom's nice and clean. Nice sharp knife does that. And all you need is two sets of leaves and a grown tip. And that's fine. Uh, as I say it, I've got uh, two or three ways I can do, do it. Put a little bit of compost in there. Multi purpose compost, and there, uh, of course, the top, the witch's hat off your, uh, off your root and hormone powder makes it a little, little stand. So, that's the first one. And all you need to do is just a little dip in there. Pen do the job, quite easy. Little hole and just below the leaves, dip them in. Once again, just pull away the raw leaves, no problem. Well, that's a little bit long for me, that. I like to have them about an inch, inch and a half. Now, what I can do is just go at that bottom node, um, I can see with the uh, with my knife. I'm going out that bottom node there, which is just there where I pulled them leaves away, and with a nice sharp knife, and just trim that off. And that to me, perfect cutting. Just a nice size. Inch and a half, two inches. No more than that. Once again, dip them in, bit of root and hormone. Drop them in. And he's perfect. Now we know my mixture. As I say, it's um, multi purpose compost. And a really good handful of sharp sand, make a really free training. Um, so what I did yesterday, I explained that I'm going to do it in three ways. The blue labels is going to be for the root and hormone. And I'll just put an R on the top there so I know. And it's Max Riley. No, it's not Max Riley, it's a uh, bronze Max. Nearly. Always best to make sure you be um always make make sure you've got your your cuttings right. There's one again, that's another one. That's a lovely just the right size that. What I'm gonna do again, just see where the bottom leaves are. I'm just gonna take it off. Nice and sharp. First rate cutting. So that's three of them. I'm well chuffed for that. They're in. What these will be doing, they'll be going into a plastic propagator, once again, lids I can open and close, got my tray, which once again you can tip water into there and walk from the bottom, no problem, that's one in there, sitting just nicely in there, propagate on top, job done. All they get now is a little bit of fresh water and just spray it on them. Right, so I'm going to strip another couple down and I'm going to go up my second method of 
instead of using the root and hormone powder, um, I'm going to use honey. Now honey's been around for <laughs> longer than we have, centuries. And people have used it throughout the, uh, throughout the ages for um, multiple health reasons, um, wounds, healing, and, uh, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Now we have wounded the croissant, we have cut it from the base, and I've just tipped a little bit of honey onto the top of my bench here, and I'm going to roll the croissant in the honey. That's that boy doing. And we'll just see exactly what will happen to him. Once again, another smaller one. Just pull away the leaves. Quite easy to take, croissant cuttings. You can put them on heat if you want. Uh, a lot of the big showmen will put them on their heat beds and they'll, uh, they'll bring them up that way. I'm quite happy just to have mine in the prop yet and just grow them away nice and slowly. They will be down, uh, down the bottom greenhouse where there's a little bit of heat on down there. But um, I'm surmising inside of here, it'll probably be around about the 55 mark, so I'm quite happy with that. So once again, nice little cutting. You know, just a little bit of honey on the bottom there. Dibber again. Pop him in. And just make sure when you're planting that, that just under the base of your leaves, and that you well pack round the sharp sand and the peat around your plant, so that way there's a good contact with your soil, coming into contact with your root, with your actual your plant, and that way you'll get a good rooting. Now that's, that's another big one I've just taken off, so I'm going to strip him well back. As I say, I've, I've left the bottoms on, so hopefully they'll throw up some nice fresh new cuttings on about the March time. Oh, that's a lovely cutting, that. Perfect. Just the nice size I like. And once again, it's just the nice length. There's a bit of damage here at the base we have pulled away. So all I need to do is just sharp knife and go to the next node, which is there. You can see the nodes where you pull the leaves off. And that's a perfect cutting. There we are. Dip it in the honey. And it's just this is just ordinary honey from the shops. As I say, all I've done is pull a little bit out on the bench. I'll probably come in the morning and there'll be ants and God knows what climbing all over this, so I'll have to try and find some way of uh, picking it up. What I should have done was put it under a little tray or the cup of the, uh, the top of the, the honey instead of just tipping it on the bench. So, once again, the marker, and I'll use the, the yellow for the honey. Mark it. So it's yellow for honey. And again, it's bronze BM. Bronze max. Well, that's the second lot done. All, all that needs now is a good spraying. Now, I was going to do a third method, but I forgot it yesterday, and of course, what I did with the willow, I've cut it up into little sections, and I put it in a jar with some warm water. So what I'll do tomorrow when I come up, there isn't, isn't much change in that water yet. I want to see it getting a bit colour to it. The smell's certainly there. But I want to see a little bit colour in that water, so I'm going to leave that overnight. And that's just willow. This is a piece of willow. And uh, when I was reading a piece in the book, it says that it had the same effect as an antiseptic and a cleaning agent for your plants, so hopefully I'll take another three cuttings tomorrow I'll put them in the same propagator and then put them downstairs in the bottom of the greenhouse there where there's a little bit of heat and we'll just see which one roots through the best what I can do, if I wanted to, I could take them down home and put them in the, in the garage uh, where there's a little bit more heat on down there where I've got me, me peppers and chilies going it's about 60 degrees but I'm quite happy just putting them down there what I want to do I'm not in a hurry to get them rooted. What I want to do is to see if there is any difference in the honey, the willow, and the hormone rooting powder. Now, if the, if the honey works as well as what that does, that's a win-win for me. So that goes out the window, and I'll be on honey from now on. Or, likewise, with the willow. Nothing better than trying to find a method which is compatible to the way you like to grow your plants. We like to be organic, as organic as we can, so we're going to adapt the same methods 
with for cuttings, for seedlings, everything else. A uh, couple of comments on the um, on the teas, the chamomile tea, uh, which I had on my last video. Now the chamomile tea is exactly the same. It's got the antibiotics, anti, anti um, plant healing properties that's in the tea, and that's why I like to use it on my seedlings. I like to give my seedlings a good soaking, a uh, good spray. As a start emerging from the compost, and then later on you can go around whatever spray you've got left and just give the plant. It doesn't harm them. Uh, it's, um, it's got multi antibacterial uses, so it's a win-win for me. As I say, we like to try and be as organic as we can and not to use any chemicals whatsoever. And this is just one of the ways that we're going to try and um, eliminate everything um, that we have to buy from the shops to get guy buy with what cuttings and whatnot. But yeah, that's the first time Chris has taken this year. I'm well chuffed. So I'm going to get them down, put them next to where the heat is, down there, and um, crack on some seed soon. I've got a little bit more seed to put up here. What I, what I do want to do for the next video is I say I want to get them apple trees planted out. So first thing I want to do is run some wires between the posts, get the wires set at the right heights. Um, the soil is perfect. It's lovely and deep, rich, so it'll go straight into there. A little bit of manure, good handful of bone meal. Uh, and what I will tackle, if I got if I get some decent weather, what I will tackle neck in the next video is the soft fruits outside. The raspberries need looking after. The strawberries are doing great, but all the ones inside, we've still got the big black three-year-old pots sitting outside. They'll not come into March, so and we'll have, as I say, we'll have a good window for fruiting season right over two or three months. So I will start tackling the outside fruit next month. We've got a couple of decent days. Uh, We'll show you how we do our, our soft fruits, our, rasper, our raspberries, uh, our canes. They need a bit of attention now, so we'll get them sorted. A bit of manure, some bone meal, uh, some um, sulfate of potash, definitely, onto them. And of course the red currants, the white currants, and the, um, the gooseberries. So we've got loads to do in the next video. So we'll crack on with that. But, um, what I want to do today is uh, get this video finished, as I say. Get on home, and then I've got uh, I've got some onions and bits and pieces to sew down home in the heat. So yeah, well chuffed for that, as I say. Croissants, if you want to try them, nothing easier than taking your own cuttings. Um, they grow quite easy. They don't take a lot of uh, lot of work, unless you're going to show, <laughs> and that's when uh, that's the difference. If you want if you want to show, you know, there's a lot of work involved in cleaning them, and cutting and uh, whatnot, but them. Um, I think there's nothing better than a good bunch of croissants in the garden, and especially when you take them home for the missus, and she's over the moment, and uh, that's me. That's where I get my pleasure. So, yeah, for the time being, it's, uh, it's a little bit chilly up here, but uh, I'm going to have my jacket on, go back to my home, home and get this video online. So, thanks for all the new subscribers. I know there's been quite a few is coming on. Um, I'm glad you're enjoying my videos. Don't forget to comment down below. Um, there's loads coming on with our comments and I'll get back as quick as I can. If you can't wait for the videos, get yourself on my Facebook page, which is Jeff Foreman on the plot. Send me a request and we'll, we'll sign you up to our Facebook page on that and there uh, we'll have discussions every night. Lots of lads from around the country coming, uh, posting their pics, the allotments, the animals, you know, fantastic. So if you want to get yourself on the plot and then send me a request. But uh, apart from that, um, Keep sharing, uh, keep subscribing, we we'll love it, as I say, that's what the garden's all about, it's sharing, and if you can get something from these videos, me and Roger's over the moon, you know, we'll help you as much as you can, uh, but don't forget, down below, just comment, and uh, we'll get back to you, if we can help you, there's plenty of other guys on our site that will, no doubt, so there's, if you've got questions, don't be afraid to ask, no matter how daft you might think they are, believe you me, they're not. Is, uh, some, sometimes the simplest, the simplest of uh, questions can be answered by the simplest of questions. No, no problem. You know, so if you don't know and you want to know, then ask away or comment down below, and we'll be over the moon. So for for time being, anyway, till the next video. Hopefully, the sun's shining, and we'll get ourselves out onto the plot, and we'll start getting these apple trees. It's probably is. It's a, it's a three-year, it's a three-year project. So in three years' time. I'm going to be picking some nice apples. Oh, they'll be fruiting before then, the first year. We'll take the first cordon that we'll take off. We will get a small lot of fruit off. And then the second year, and then the third year, we're going to build them up like a Christmas tree. They'll be fantastic. So, three years' time. 
we'll be run with hands, getting the apples off, and hopefully make us a little bit of cider. But uh, for the time being, thanks for watching, as I say, thanks for sharing, and thanks for subscribing. And we'll see you all on the plot soon, okay?